So we're here on Omaha Beach, and this is the far eastern flank of Omaha Beach. This is known as Fox Red, and this is where the 16th Infantry Regiment came ashore, part of uh, the Big Red One, the 1st Infantry Division. And it's on this location where that famous footage of the US soldiers being shot at, and unfortunately some of them being hit by uh, the German forces was taken. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly where I believe that footage was taken from. I'm going to show you exactly where I believe the Germans were firing from. The long-awaited assault on Fortress Europe began in the early hours of the 6th of June 1944. You can see the bluffs in the background obscured by smoke from naval and aerial bombardment, and you can see small, stationary dark objects in the middle ground. This could be men huddling for cover, but it could also be casualties on the beach. And in the foreground, you can see heavily laden men trying to wade ashore. They needed to be like rabbits on D-Day, and instead, they were more like turtles. So let's look at this in more detail. You can see here the strike marks from bullets aimed at these soldiers, including a machine gun burst which has come from the left-hand side of the screen. As for our story, it was 0700 hours on D-Day, already 30 minutes behind schedule, when LCAs carrying the men of Captain John Armelino's L Company hit Omaha Beach. The moment the ramps were lowered, the only thing the men saw was 180 metres of open beach ahead of them, with sheer cliffs ahead of that. On top of these bluffs was the German strong point, WN60. So let's look at the ground in general. This is the stretch of Normandy coastline named Omaha Beach by the D-Day planners. It is far more rural here than at Sword and Juno beaches, with only small hamlets and villages inland that you can see here in green. Omaha Beach was approximately 10 kilometers or six miles long, and it was separated into sectors. Charlie, Dog Green, Dog White, Dog Red, Easy Green, Easy Red, Fox Green, and Fox Red. It had natural exits off the beach called D1, D3, E1, E3, and F1. Remember, the enemy gets a vote, and they position strong points overlooking those exits. Our story starts at the eastern end of Omaha Beach. As the lead elements of the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 16th Infantry Regiment approached the beach, it became apparent that many of the enemy's strong points had not been eliminated by the pre-invasion bombardment. As landing craft dropped their ramps, men were killed and wounded as they attempted to get out of the boats. Others were hit as they struggled through the surf or tried to run across the sand, weighed down with their waterlogged equipment. You can see these men, very likely of L Company, being hit as they waded ashore. So I'm now stood in what I think was the location where that famous footage was taken. The cameraman had clearly sought refuge at the cliffs and he was filming the subsequent waves coming ashore. It was right here in this view where you could see those brave sons of America being shot at from the bluffs up above. And I believe they were being shot at from Vida Stan's Nest 60, which is just to the right-hand side of this footage on the bluffs up above. And the reason I think that is because you can see some of the strikes in the water coming up behind the soldiers, which indicates that the firing position was slightly further east. They could equally have been fired at from Vila Stans Nest 62, which is slightly further along. A really powerful defensive position there as well. But I do think that they were being fired at directly from in front of them from Vila Stans Nest 60. And in this video, I'm gonna take you to Vila Stans Nest 60 and look at exactly where those German soldiers were who were firing down on those brave American soldiers who are running ashore right here. And so I believe this is pretty much the exact location where those soldiers came ashore. And of course, you can never be 100% sure because of the erosion, the, the cliffs have changed and the beach defences aren't here as references anymore. But if you look up this way, you can see the bluffs up there where the trees are pretty much in the centre of the shot now. That is Vida Stans Nest 60. And from there, We've got trench positions, there are Tobruks, there are defensive positions where the Germans are firing down onto this beach. 
It's really not that far. The camera probably makes it look a bit further than it is. But in direct line of sight, that is probably no more than 400 meters. Easily with an effective range of small arms fire and machine guns. And I believe that it was from that position where the Germans were located and they were firing down on the 16th Infantry Regiment as they landed here. And in particular, L Company. And L Company are the formation who assaulted that position and were going to look at their route up to Bieder Stanzen 60 and how they got there and how they took the position shortly. So these are some of those distinctive cliffs that you can see in some of the pictures and the footage that I've shared with you. And of course, there's lots of erosion here, so it's never going to be the same location exactly, but there's no doubt in my mind that these are the same sort of structures where you could see uh, the soldiers seeking shelter, the injured lying at the base of these cliffs, getting out of the German fire from above them. And it's not really possible to do then and now pictures, which I love doing. But there's no doubt in my mind that this is the same location. So it's cliffs just like this at the top of the beach where the infantry would have sought refuge. The killing fields as they were crossing that beach would have been absolutely horrific. But these cliffs gave them refuge from the fire up above at Vida Stans Nest 60. And we're going to take a look at Vida Stans Nest 60 right now. Now let's look at the ground in detail. WN60 occupied the bluffs overlooking the Fox Red sector and the F1 draw at the far eastern end of the beach. Here you can see the position with the draw to its left. Using satellite imagery, you can still see the trenches today, so let's overlay the trench system. WN60 had two mortar to brooks for 5 cm mortars to provide indirect fire support for the position. It also had two machine gun to brooks at the rear to cover the position, as well as multiple machine guns along the seaward side. It also had two 7.5mm field guns that would fire along the beach, perhaps even towards the D1 draw. In addition to this, the position was surrounded by barbed wire and two minefields. It really was a formidable position, manned by up to 40 German soldiers. Quick break to say we've reached 100,000 subscribers. You can support the channel for just the cost of a coffee by joining Patreon clubs such as the Guards Armoured Division, the Winston Club, the Anzacs, and the Filthy 13. So once the infantry had landed and they'd made their way off the beach, they used exits just like this one to head inland. And it was that position up on the high ground there that they were trying to get to. That is Vida Stan's Nest 60. So let's go there now. Right, once L Company had made it off the beach, they headed up this dirt track as it was back then to try and flank Vida Stan's Nest 60, which is at the top of the bluffs. So it's a bit of a walk up there and we'll film once we get to the top. And it was Lieutenant 
Jimmy Monteith, who led the way, leading his men off the beach and up this re-entrant to flank the enemy position. This is the first time I've ever gone to WN60 and the bravery of the US soldiers astounds me to this day. And remember, it wasn't just a case of getting off the beach, getting up the draw and then attacking the position. They also had to endure multiple counterattacks as the day drew on. They actually managed to silence this position by around about 0900 on D-Day. As we get over this rise, we're going to get an amazing view pretty much for the length of Omaha Beach. You can see Vida stands in 60 right here. One of the best preserved positions in my view. And then we get this view of Omaha Beach. Right, we're here at Vida Stands Nest 60, the strong position on the bluffs overlooking the landing beaches that we've just been to. And it was from this position where that deadly fire was coming from. We're going to explore the trenches and explore the defensive systems that the Germans had created here. And I'll show you exactly why this is such a well defended area. Now, it wouldn't be a video on Omaha Beach without the obligatory uh, background shot of Omaha Beach behind me. And you can see the arcing crescent of the beach going off into the distance. That crescent is really important because the defensive fires were going across the beach. They don't fire out to sea, uh, as some people think. So the fact that the beach is crescent and arcing actually enables those fires to be uh, more efficient. And the enfilading fire here was really brutal. Okay, Vida stands nest 60 then occupied this bluff this promontory which covered the landing beach down there that we've just visited and this was occupied by around about 40 german soldiers or so it had a number of tobruks connected with these trenches and these trenches are original they haven't been dug like in some places on the western front um redug after the war these are all original trenches and we're going to explore all of these in this video. We're going to walk along the trenches that the Germans would use to defend this position, to resupply each of the Tobruks and the strong points and the machine gun nests. It's so surreal to be here. This is actually the first time I've ever visited. It's just amazing, isn't it? Well, this is the first Tobruk that we come to on the site. It's on the left-hand side or the far western side of WN60. And you can see this jagged uh, opening here. And just like trenches, you don't want straight trenches, just like you don't want straight entrances to defensive positions. This is to deflect any shrapnel, to ensure there are corners you have to fight around, uh, makes it very difficult to assault. Now, they are um, slightly flooded, so I won't be going inside but this one is of the typical construction that we see all over Normandy. And this one had a pintle mount, likely used for a mortar. So it was elements of L Company who came up here, salted from the beach, having just landed and experienced that horrible scenes that we saw in the video. And they came up that track, which we walked up and they assaulted these positions, occupied by about 40 Germans or so. And the Germans put up really stiff resistance here. And all, all the people you speak to say that the Germans here weren't well trained or weren't really up for a fight. I don't think that's necessarily the case, especially places like this. This, uh, some ammunition stowage there. Uh, 
the Germans made huge efforts to try and counterattack to recover this position so it shows just how important it was for the enemy and this is the view looking down onto that landing location so the Germans based here and in the forward positions who were firing down onto those soldiers who were landing in the footage that we saw it just absolutely blows my mind they were stood likely right here so we're going to continue to pick up this uh, trench line right here and we're now coming towards the sort of eastern side of the fortification you can see here there's another structure just down here again with excellent views down onto the landing site just down there hallowed ground Omaha Beach it's an absolute honor to be able to come here and film and try and share the stories of the Americans who fought here of course there's nothing new there's hundreds of videos out there and people have done this lots and lots and lots uh, and people do it much better than I have but it really is an absolute honor to be able to come here and see these locations and share them with people Look at that, you can perfectly see the zigzag of the trench system as you'd expect. Always want to have your attackers fighting around corners, not able to fire down lengths of trench. First time I've ever been to this location. Actually thinking back to the first time that I went to many of these places, I probably had a similar reaction. And this is uh, all new to me, so I do apologize if I Sound a bit OTT here, but this is uh, somewhere I've always wanted to visit. So at the far eastern end now of the position, I just wanted to cover the perimeter and then go back across and have a look at the defences. But this is a a draw here and these pretty much characterized um, the sort of topography that you see here where you have a, a re-entrant essentially but these are actually really good exits off a beach and off the landing locations this one wasn't necessarily um, used to get off the beach they used the draw that we walked up and that was because it had a dirt path that was easy to get up but um, also because it probably allowed them more cover as well. You can imagine if you had trench systems along here or a position, you would just fire into this with impunity, quite frankly. You could just have a machine gun, trench system up here, firing down into that draw, potentially even from both sides, from the other side of that bluff there as well. So really well defended. The only thing they couldn't do, of course, was fire into the dead ground the ground they couldn't they couldn't see and that's the track that uh, l company used and lieutenant jimmy monteef we're now heading back towards the western side of wn60 this is where you'll see a couple more to brooks and an area for a flak gun as well 20 mm, 20 millimeter flak gun which is located pretty much in the center of the position i'm just going to go and take a look at those now all connected with trenches. Really good defensive position, clear fields of fire to the rear of the position. If we just show you the rear, how flat and open is that? If you had this to Brook, I'll just show you the elevation of any potential gun from this position. clear field of fire. It's 
So this is the entrance to the machine gun to Brook. Towards the rear of the position, and here is that field of fire. Just look at that unimpeded view where they would likely expect enemy attacks to come from. And indeed they did. The attacks came from just further right from here, just in that direction as they came up the track. Right, this position is not flooded, so we are going to go and take a look. Straight away you can see the standing position where the defender in this position would have been firing his machine gun. And on either side, left and right, you can see ammunition stowage areas. So really the limiting factor here is how much ammunition can you store in this position? Because you would have had to be resupplied, connected by these trenches, but if you start getting cut off, your resupply is going to be cut off as well. Let's go and take a look inside. Yeah, so interestingly, there's no stowage areas on the inside of this one. Perhaps they would have been on these ledges, could have boxes of ammunition. But it'd be quite easy to use up that ammunition and quite quickly as well. Especially if you're panicking and you're in the defense. The invasion's finally here. But to the south of the position, which is the, the landward side essentially, big cornfield here today, but back then there would have, you know, likely would not have been corn. They would have wanted to keep that clear so they could have a clear field of fire. We've got that um, trench system coming from the machine gun that we've just been to down into this next position. Now this does have water and mud in. We'll see if we can get in there. And there's not much to see here, but this is where a uh, 20 millimeter flat gun would have been located, right in the centre of the position. And there's that little strong point with the machine gun to Brook covering where L Company came to attack this position. Just over there. This is where I fall on my ass. I hope you enjoyed this video. I plan to visit WN60 again in the future to tell the story of Lieutenant Jimmy Monteith and how he was awarded the Medal of Honor when they captured this position. If you did enjoy the video and you appreciate my effort to share it, why not like the video and leave a comment? By doing this, the video is promoted more by YouTube and more people get to see it, so you really do make a huge difference. Thank you for your support, until next time.
couple of people have asked about the Brenslinger top I'm wearing in some of these videos, and they've asked where they can get their hands on it. Reaper17 is the store that I use, so visit their website, which you can find in the description, to get your hands on this top and others just like it. I don't really promote brands on this channel, but I make an exception for this brand. They are veteran owned and veteran operated. All the links you need are in the description below.